Hi, my name is Erin Patrick. I'm a senior in the Communication Disorders Department. I'd like to thank you all today for listening to my presentation on maple syrup urine disease or MSUD. Maple syrup urine disease is an autosomal recessive disorder that is inherited in both the mother and the father. So in this case, both parents have to have a copy of the mutated gene. There's a 25% chance that child will be completely normal, they're not going to be a carrier, and they're not going to have the disease. There's a 50% chance that the child will be a carrier, and a 25% chance that the child will have MSUD. With maple syrup urine disease, the body is not able to properly metabolize the amino acids leucine, isoleucine, and valine. This is going to lead up to a buildup of harmful toxins in the bloodstream, which can lead to seizures, extreme nausea, dehydration, and in extreme cases, even death. The most defining characteristic of maple syrup urine disease is the urine and earwax are going to form maple syrup. There's also going to be changes in the muscle tone. The muscles are going to become stiff and hard to move, which is referred to as hypertonia. The muscles could also become spastic, which is when they're really tight because of the prolonged muscle contractions. There's also going to be a lot of issues with feeding and an increased chance of the infant developing jaundice, which is going to be due to their enlarged liver. Another symptom of this is going to be seizures. The seizures are also going to be able, are also going to lead to um, the increased chance of developing cerebral palsy and different developmental delays. This is going to be based on the severity, the duration, and the frequency of the infant seizures. Diagnosis is primarily going to be done in the hospital after the baby is born via the newborn screening blood tests that are done. There's also the opportunity for parents to get genetically tested for themselves as well as any other children to see if they're carriers of any other diseases in addition to maple syrup urine disease. Treatments can vary from each individual depending on the severity of their symptoms. Most are gonna have a strict diet in which they're gonna really be limiting their protein intake. They're gonna go through nutrition therapy. In extreme cases, even a liver transplant might be needed due to their enlarged liver. The liver transplant is one of the most beneficial ways of giving these individuals the best quality of life possible. There's four different types of maple syrup urine disease. The most common is, and the most severe is classic. This is when the symptoms are going to be developing within the first three days of life. Typically, this is when the newborn is still in the hospital. So most likely, the doctor is going to be able to catch it, and treatment is going to be able to be started quickly for the infant. Next is intermediate. These symptoms are less severe. They're going to be developing between five months and seven years of age. The symptoms are still going to be the same as classic, but like mentioned before, they're not as severe. Intermittent, intermittent is the next one. These children are developing as expected until an infection or a period of stress is introduced to the child. This is going to lead to these symptoms showing the poor feeding, the seizures, changes in muscle tone. Even in older people, older ch children, it's going to be the dehydration, not wanting to eat, just being very fatigued all the time. Um, but these, like I said before, these individuals are able to tolerate a little bit of higher levels of the protein, but still not as much as a typical individual would be. And lastly, they're thymine responsive. These people are able to respond really well to high doses of B1. Along with that, along with their restricted diet, they're typically live a pretty normal life. With any disorder, there's gonna be risks involved. Liver failure is really common in these individuals. That's why liver, liver transplants are highly recommended. Developing cerebral palsy and Parkinson's disease, that's gonna be due to the issues with the muscle tone and different brain damage that can be occur that can occur due to the seizures. Same thing with the developmental delay. That's typically um, what's gonna be caused from the seizures due to different like the brain the severity of the brain damage. And unfortunately, death is common with these individuals. Sometimes it's left untreated, sometimes the seizures are just too much and the poor feeding, it can just be too much for an individual to handle. In the US, one about every 185,000 babies are gonna be diagnosed with maple syrup disease every year. But in the Mennonite populations, one every 380, which I found that statistic to be really unique since we are so close to that area in Pennsylvania. And currently there's about 2,000 people living with maple syrup urine disease today. Of course, there's support groups these individuals. You can visit the msudsupport.org website and it's held MSUD Family Support Group. 
with this, there's different food options. They have like, they post recipes for each other. They post their stories. And it's a great way for people to be able to connect with each other and to really show that they are there and they're gonna support each other through their times with maple syrup urine disease. And thank you.